Hello and welcome to The Clan Show, your one-stop shop for all clan fans and what an action-packed show it is for you tonight as well. We'll be taking a look at game night through the eyes of Clangus. We'll also have our own response to the NHL All-Star Skills Competition, courtesy of Derek Rail. We'll be announcing our competition winner for those corporate tickets, as well as introducing our next competition. We'll also have the Crossbar Challenge, what an incredible one it is as well this month. And I'll be chatting to our star goalie, Kyle Jones, whilst at the same time keeping the streets safe. But first up, let's have a look back over January at some results which saw the clan finish rather proudly top of the Elite League. First up on January the 2nd, a successful Friday night trip to Fife which saw the clan defeat the Flyers 4-2. Before returning home on the Saturday to take on the Dundee Stars, a tightly contested encounter which eventually saw Lee Salters squeeze in a match winner as clan take it 2-1. The weekend got even better on Sunday the 4th as Clan demolished Edinburgh Capitals 5-0 in Murrayfield, completing an excellent six-point weekend. The Flyers came to Brayhead the following weekend, but they probably wish they hadn't after Clan put five past them with only one reply. Lee Salters keeping his balance and finishing well to get the scoring started. Sunday the 11th wrapped up another good weekend, Clan defeating Hull on the road 4-1. A midweek game in the Challenge Cup saw Clan take a strong first leg lead against Coventry. Saturday the 17th and it was back to conference business. Clan taking apart the Dundee Stars 6-2. Ryan Kavanagh back on the ice after injury and showing the Purple Army what they've been missing. What a wonderful finish from Ryan Kavanagh! Midweek and back to Challenge Cup duties. Clan looking for a place in the semi-final against Cardiff but crash out against a short-benched, battling Coventry Blaze side who incredibly recover from the first tie and went on penalty shots. A return to form on Saturday the 24th, Clan with another convincing win over the Edinburgh Capitals. Kyle Jones making a wonderful penalty shot save to get Clan on the way. And in fact, immediately after that, Edinburgh pretty much gave us a helping hand with some cataclysmic defence. Captain Keith also with a wonderful finish as the clan romped to a 7-3 victory. The good vibes didn't last too long, however, as the next night, clan travelled down to Nottingham for a top-of-the-table clash, coming out 6-3 losers in a game that barely saw them off the penalty kill. Saturday, the 31st of January, also proved to be disappointing, many in the league expecting a clan victory against the Hull Stingrays. It all seemed to be going to plan, clan taking a 2-0 lead, but it all went wrong in the third, a heavy hit on Keith, saw Blaze play to the whistle and Omar Pasha's men had their comeback. It's no fun ending on a sour note and luckily we don't have to. Last Sunday, Clan travelled to Dundee for a solid 3-1 win, which also featured an impressive punch-up between Chris Frank and Brad Plumpton. Well, there you have it, quite a hectic schedule in January with a few surprises but plenty of goals as well. And while we're on the subject of goals, our man between the posts, Kyle Jones, has six shutouts this season. That's more than any other goaltender. And I thought a man who's that good at protecting the net would probably be pretty good at protecting the public as well. So, we decided to be cops for the day. Clan scene investigation. Hey, John, how are you doing? Good, how are you? You ready? I've got the coffee, I've got the donuts. You ready to be cops then? I am, I am, but uh, actually cops is a pretty North American term. Uh -huh. the, the proper terminology here in the UK would just be policemen. Right. Modern, modern police were introduced originally by Sir Robert Peel. Yeah. He's a former British MP, but I think you would might know that. Yeah, probably should have known that. Yeah. But you can come in anyways. Yeah, is that all right? Thanks yeah. for chastising me at the start of the interview. Yeah, no problem. My name's Kyle Jones, number 29 for the Brayhead clan, goaltender. My playing style would be, I don't really have a playing style. It's kind of an awkward hybrid. Whatever I have to do to get my body in front of the puck, that's what I do. I just try to work as hard as I can and you know, do, do my job as the best of my ability every night and kind of lead by example. Well, thanks for letting me in there, Kyle. I appreciate that. Yeah, you bet. We can obviously, I mean, this is what this is what police do anyway, yeah. isn't it? So that's kind of fine. Yeah, as far as I know. Cool. Uh, though I just want to ask you first up a little bit about getting into ice hockey. Sure. You get it always sounds a bit strange asking Canadians about how they got into <laughs> ice hockey. Yeah. But what was the first thing that attracted you to to playing ice hockey, and particularly your position as well? Well, I think most people know that Canada is a pretty pretty hockey crazy country, but. Uh, 
those individual cities that have NHL teams are even more so. I grew up in just outside Vancouver, so everybody there loves the Canucks, and I was no different. And uh, so following them was was a big part of my childhood. But uh, uh, the main reason, I guess, is I grew up watching my dad play. He played. Uh, he just played men's league back home, but he played until he was pretty much 50 or so. So wow. I'd always go and watch him, and he was a goalie too. So. And so it was that, always destined. Then. Yeah, I, you know, I always wanted to be like him when I was a kid, and yeah. you know, so and then the first time I gave it a shot, I did pretty well and kind did of just took off playing, from there. Uh, out, out of net, first of all, and then you're just like it was always destined to be. Yeah, I think when I was, you know, in third grade or second grade or something like that, I split, played forward half and played uh, goalie half, and then after that, it just kind of stuck to goalie. I'm 31 now. I've probably been playing goal for 25 years. So wow, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a long time. All of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. Is it what was when you suddenly decided that you thought I could do this professionally? At what stage was that? Uh, you know, coming through college, I had a I had an okay career in junior, and then I was fortunate to get to go to, to college and play hockey in the U.S. And uh, you know, kind of took off from there. We we had played on four pretty great teams, and you know, we had ended up winning a national championship my senior year. So. And uh, that was probably the best season of my life, and kind of, kind of thought about it at the end of at the end of that season, and you know, all it took was an opportunity, and a couple of teams came calling, so yeah. just kind of jumped at the opportunity to give it a chance. And then tell us, but obviously before you made a kind of direct jump from uh, North America to the UK, yep. but before that you were in Colorado, weren't you? Yep. With the Eagles, can you tell us a little bit about the setup there and the relative success that happened there as well? Yeah, actually. Uh, I was pretty lucky to get to, to get to go to Colorado. Um, you know, it's a team that everybody wants to go play for just because it's such a professional organization. And um, luckily for me, there was somebody on the team who knew my college coach and kind of got me an opportunity to go try out. And I was lucky enough to make the team and ended up staying there for three years. And it was uh, uh, Heidi and I fell in love with Colorado and, and uh, we might, you know, we might settle down there someday. You never know. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's. Playing there, it was it was second to none in, in, at that level in uh, in uh, North America. To just the way you get treated by by the the team and by the fans, and nothing but great things to say about that organization. And is that where you met Heidi? You mentioned Heidi is your missus, who I have to I have to say on camera, head coach Ryan Infinity calls her his off ice <laughs> captain. She's head of everything that happens off ice. Where did you meet? Uh, we actually met in college. At uh, we went to a school called Saint Norbert in uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin. So we met our senior year there, and we've yeah. been together ever since. It's been about seven years now. Yeah, wow. Been married for two and a half. Well, she must be very supportive of your kind of hockey career. It's quite a bizarre, bizarre life she to is. live, I suppose, isn't it? Like one minute Colorado, yeah. next minute you're in Brayhead. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's she's been she's been extremely supportive of this, and you know, letting me chase my dream for for a few years here. It's been seven years of playing pro hockey, and. Uh, you know, we've we've had a great time doing it, and who knows what the future holds. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit? I mean, you're saying about how well the organisation treated you in Colorado, yeah. and around about that time, the league kind of structure changed up while you were there as well, didn't yeah. it? That could be. There's quite a lot of upheaval involved in that. Not uh, not particularly. Kind of just. Uh, I mean, my first year there were in the Central Hockey League, and then it moved to the ECHL the second year and third year. So it kind of just went up a step and. You know, it's a little bit better league and a little bit better competition and, yeah. and uh, had some affiliations with some NHL teams. So it gave guys more of an opportunity to move up and down. Yeah. And what can happen then to create your move to the UK? Because that's quite a big jump. So, I mean, a, a league jump yeah. in, in much regard isn't too different. Yeah. But then this is a huge difference for a lifestyle choice and, and style of hockey maybe even as well. Yeah, sure it is. Uh, you know, I, we love being in Colorado and, you know, it's... I always at some point had, want, had wanted to come overseas, uh, didn't know where. I know I'd, I'd always uh, kind of looked into the elite league and I knew guys that played in this league. So I've heard great things. And, you know, when the opportunity came uh, to come to Brayhead, you know, I thought I might not get another chance. And like I said, I've always wanted to come overseas. So yeah. just had to jump at the opportunity at the time. What players was it that you, that you knew then that had played in the league before and who were they playing with? I actually knew a couple guys who played in Brayhead. Uh, yeah. John Landry, actually, after he played in Brayhead, came to Colorado for a little bit, so I got to play with him, and, and also Matt Hansen. Um, Matt Hansen played in Colorado before he came to Brayhead, too. So, And what uh, kind of feedback did they give you about what was happening in the UK? Because obviously th everyone talks about the dramatic growth in the Elite League, but a few years ago, obviously there was a few years back, and yeah. what were they saying? Did they see that there was some progression kind of happening there? or Yeah, I think so. I think so, yeah. I think especially John Landry could tell. And he, he actually did the schooling when he was here too. So it, that was a big a big selling point for me in coming also. And uh, I know they, they both just said how, how much the league is growing and, and it's just continued to grow. And I think it's getting better every year. 
Can you tell us a little bit about that, that schooling then as well? So you actually got your uh, degree over here? Yeah. So I got, as well was it in business? Yeah, I got my MBA from uh, the University of the West of Scotland. So that was a, that was a, that was a huge thing for me. Um, um, getting as much school as possible is, is big uh, just for life after hockey. So. Well, I mean, I guess that's good, but I mean, we can't just kind of hang around the kitchen all day. Yeah. Can we go out and do some work? Maybe, well, oh, let's go bust some criminals. Yeah, let's go, let's go, find, let's go fight some crime. Okay. Cheers. So, Kyle, it's been a pretty good season mm-hmm. for Brayhead so far, and you decided to you decided to re-sign again as well. What was that major factor in deciding to re-sign again for the club? You know, we said we had a, a great year last year, made it to the final four, and you know, I know Finner wanted me back after the season, and you know, I always, you know, if I was going to keep playing, I was coming back here. So, mm. I've said it a lot this year, but Finner did a great job of recruiting, and uh, he put together a great team, and. So it was, it was an easy choice. And you said there, if I was going to keep on playing, now do you mean that you were thinking about stopping playing? No, no, it's, it wasn't that. Just, I mean, it's always in the back. Of, I'm 31 years old, so it's always in the back of your head. But you know, the you know, guy's you, playing on now to the 40s. No, that's that's nice. true. It's true, but it's always in the back of your head that someday it's going to end. You can't mm. play. Not very many people play hockey for their entire lives. Um, so, well, I mean, I guess that's the kind of serious part of the interview done here, Cal. Now I've got the really hard bits. Oh, great. Are you ready for this? Okay, what's your favourite black and white animal? Well, the first one, I don't know if it's my favourite, the first one came to my head is a panda. Okay, good one. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, was there any kind of particular reason for that? because you're in Scotland? The first or? thing I saw in my head was a panda bear, so I, I don't know. It's not my yeah. favourite dog. What about a black and white dog? Or There's lots of black and white animals. <laughs> Man, that would have been, uh, been way better because I like dogs. What division are you guys from? I don't know. I'm a hockey player. You're a what? I'm a, yeah, and I'm an actor. We're not. Yeah. Joe's a serious crime impersonator a police officer, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. Do you want Sorry. to step out of the car please sir? Yeah sure. Okay. Well, I guess that's the end of the interview, thanks right. very much yeah. there. Thanks for thanks having for me. me. No cheers Kyle, I'm you sure know. this won't have a problem in your, your career. Control. You know I got practice Tested, tomorrow right? Uh, yeah it'll be fine, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay. No worries. Kyle Jones there, an absolute integral part of the clan team and Evidently a credit to the force as well. Right, it's crossbar challenge time. It's that part of the show. This week we have Tristan Harper, Scott Arson, Jamie Fritch and keep an eye out for teenager Jordan Busa. He's been training with the clan recently and could be a real talent to look out for. Crossbar challenge. Well, a pretty impressive crossbar challenge there. It was supposed to be something that was almost impossible to do. We might have to change it up and get a different game. Maybe shoot for loot. Definitely Scott Arson hit it. Definitely Jamie Fritch. What about Jordan there? Fantastic. The young lad stepping up, full of confidence. Did Tristan Harper hit it? It sounded like it did. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. In fact, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt and we'll have a look at one of his modelling pictures. <laughs> Oh, right, okay, that's, that's that's quite enough of that. Right, competition time. And first of all, we'll draw the winner of last month's competition, which was two corporate hospitality tickets. And drawn at random, the winner is Kat Gilbert, Twitter handle at KatG83. So congratulations to you, Kat. To arrange your prize, get in touch with Alex at BrayheadClan.com and she'll help you arrange your prize and picking it up. Okay, this week's competition, or this month's competition, shall I say, is for a signed clan shirt, signed by the whole team. 
To win it, answer the following question. It's always a tough question, so brace yourself. Which mid-19th century former British Prime Minister is credited with inventing the modern police force? So that's which mid-19th century former British Prime Minister is credited with inventing the modern police force? Is it A, Sir Robert Peel? B, Jim Taggart? Or C, Matt Nickerson? Okay, so is that A, Sir Robert Peel? B, Jim Taggart, or C, Matt Nickerson. Obviously, the same three elements you need. Twitter entries only again, so I'll have the correct answer at Brayhead underscore clan, as well as the link to this show. You need all three of those elements. A few people missed out from being included in the draw because they missed out those three elements. Okay, so get your correct answers into us straight away. Right, coming up next, we've all been talking about, and a lot of people saw the NHL All-Star Skills Show, uh, which happened last week. Some pretty impressive stuff there. There was a few people suggesting that maybe we should do something like that. So I'll tell you what, we sent our cameras down to training with the boys, and with the help of Derek Rail, we came up with something pretty special. Have a look at this. Well, there you have it. I'm sure you'll agree with me. Pretty impressive stuff there. Big thanks to the boys for letting us film that in training. And a huge thanks for Joe Meyer's stand-in, Greg Brown from the Brayhead clan office, who stole his jersey and went between the posts for us, just in case Joe was worrying about his goalkeeping reputation. Right, OK, coming up next, have you ever wondered what game night looked like through the eyes of Clangus? No, neither have I either, but we strapped a camera to his chest anyway, and we came up with some interesting stuff. What a life that guy lives. Clangus, over to you. Game night through the eyes of number one clan man, Clangus. Game nights are busy nights for Clangus when you're the most popular cow at Bray Head. Well, you need to reach out and touch your people. It's not all fun and frolics. Clangus is much needed in an official capacity for a puck drop. Quite the celebrity. And every home game, Poor Clangus is also a dancing target, helping to decide the Chuck a Puck competition winner. Often almost too close to call. He's also a modern cow, able to use modern technology. I have literally no idea how he wrote on that screen with hoofs that size. Clangus loves to watch hockey. Almost as much as he loves pinching hats and meeting new friends. A trip to see the clan wouldn't be complete without having a photo taken with Clangus. Although, maybe not if he sneaks up on you. I'm not sure if Clangus has paid up his Section N Purple Army membership. don't seem to mind. At the end of the day, Clangus loves getting close to the players, close to the fans and close to the action. He's just a lucky cow. Well, there you have it. Quite an insight into the best mascot in the league, in my opinion, and probably yours. Right, we don't have much time left on the show, but we do have just enough time for a quick look at this month's schedule. Well, there's going to be plenty of action at Brayhead Arena with almost all the games in February happening at home. First up, Saturday the 7th of February, Brayhead entertained the Belfast Giants, a huge game which can have a big deciding factor on where the championship goes. Wednesday the 11th of February, Brayhead entertained the Hull Stingrays. Clan will be looking to enact some revenge on that one. Saturday the 14th of Feb, Valentine's Night, Brayhead Clan entertain the Cardiff Devils, sure to be another feisty one and another integral game for the season. Saturday the 21st of February, Brayhead again at home against the Dundee Stars, conference and league points up for grabs there. And finally, 
To wrap up February, it couldn't get any more important than this. It's the Nottingham Panthers coming to Brayhead and that game will be live on Premier Sports. A huge one to look forward to. Well, there you have it, a hugely exciting February coming up. Could well decide where the Elite League ends up at the end of March. In the meantime, that's about all from us. Make sure you get your competition entries in. Remember that question, who is accredited for inventing the modern police force? Is it A, Sir Robert Peel, former Prime Minister? Is it B, Jim Taggart, character? Is it C, Matt Nickerson, Fife Flyer? Do your best with that one. Remember, you need all three elements at Brayhead underscore clan, the link to this show and the correct answer. In the meantime, we'll hopefully see you on Saturday as clan take on the Belfast Giants. Tickets are selling really quickly for that one, so get them in now if you haven't already got one. Or we'll see you next month for the clan show. Cheerio. Mm -hmm.